Hey there, good looking. In this episode of Ask PJ Anything, we'll be chatting about deadlifts, whether or not it's okay if your back pops or cracks while you exercise, how to incorporate a regular strength training schedule into an already full-time schedule of running. All that and more in this episode of Ask PJ Anything. So buckle up and let's get started. Hi there and welcome. If you're unfamiliar with me, my name is PJ Ren and I've been a certified personal trainer, fitness instructor, and coach for nearly three decades. And this is where women and a few good men over the age of 40 come to work on living their fittest and fiercest life. It is so awesome to have you here. Now you've popped on to a series that we call Ask PJ Anything. It's here where my amazing Patreon community and over 50 fitness community, as well as the YouTube community can ask me questions regarding health, fitness, nutrition, and even random personal ones. So if you have a question, feel free to hit up the link in the description below and we may feature it in a future episode. All right, let's get going. First off, Noga asks, and I really hope I'm saying your name correctly, Noga. I apologize if I'm not. After sticking to your plan like glue, I started running again, three times a week. In between that, I target two upper body strength workouts, one full body strength workout from your plan, she means the Patreon calendar, and I take one day rest. Does that seem to make sense? <laughs> hey, Noga, first off, congrats on getting back to your running program again. Listen, there's been a lot of fear mongering about how running or long distance cardio isn't the best activity for women over 40. It doesn't burn fat very well, it's hard on the joints, yada yada, yada yada, yada yada. You know what? If you like running, run, damn it. The best exercise in the world is the one that you'll do. And if you enjoy that exercise, guess what? You'll do it. Now, Noga, after reviewing your program that you wrote, I really only have a few suggestions for you because you got it going on, girl. First, I would love to see you add some speed work into one run a week. This can be done at total random throughout your run. They call this fartlek training if you decide to go that route. So that's literally where you decide, hey, I'm going to run faster from this telephone pole to that car. You know, giving yourself varying lengths throughout your run and varying landmarks for that matter. Or you can make it a little bit more training based and head to the track and use the same distance each sprint and each interval. That's what I do. But there are a couple of reasons I want you to add intervals into your running. And if you're a runner and you're not doing speed work, please add some because speed work will help you run faster and with less effort. And who the heck doesn't want that? Second thing, please do not no neglect your mobility and flexibility training. It seems the older we get, the faster we lose those, which is a recipe for a future injury. I fit my mobility and flexibility work in daily, and I do it in the evenings before bed. I find it super convenient for me to do that. So find a time of a day that's easy for you to add, you know, to even 5, 10 minutes to going upwards to 20 to 30 minutes if you've got the time. You want to focus on your ankles and hips for your mobility work, and then your calves, hip flexors, quads, hamstrings, hip muscles, glutes, including the piriformis, and your quadrus lumborum for your flexibility work. And finally, I absolutely love your reasoning for doing two upper body strength workouts and one total body strength workout a week, because I know what you're doing with that. Because the theory and what you're, you're thinking is, your legs are already getting a good workout with my runs. And you know what? Your reasoning is bang on, my friend. On your total body strength days, however, or maybe you can add a few exercises at the end of an upper body workout, please do some auxiliary lower body strength work that will strengthen the muscles that don't get targeted as much with running. These muscles include your gluteus medius, so these are our, our outer hip muscles. We do that a lot in my workouts. Your glutes themselves hamstrings, the big muscles down the back of your thighs, and then even hit your tibialis anterior ever so often too. And these are the little muscles in front of our shin that can get shin splints when neglected. Sound good? But you're doing awesome. I'm proud of you. All right. Mary from Wisconsin wants to know, what is an alternative to the RDL for someone like me who has balance issues? Hey, Mary. 
Um, do you mean a single leg RDL though? Anyways, but let, before we jump into RDL and single leg and balance and everything, let's first chat about, because you may be wondering, what the heck is a difference between a deadlift and a Romanian deadlift, or what we call an RDL? And that's the RDL, what Mary's asking about. Now, both exercises target your glutes, hamstrings, and lower back muscles. The big difference between them is the range of motion while performing the exercise. But first, I need you to understand that both of these exercises were actually developed with barbells in mind, so that long bar with the weight plates at the end, which I know isn't really convenient for home use. Most people, including myself, only have access to dumbbells. Uh, there's very few people that have barbells and plates. But traditionally, both deadlift patterns are done with barbells and the plates on the end. So with that said, the difference between a deadlift and an RDL is in a deadlift, the barbell comes all the way to the floor. So you have greater range of motion. And for an RDL, the hip hinge is more focused. The lift ends in front of the shins or when you can no longer maintain a neutral spine. Your RDL also focuses on the eccentric contraction, so the lowering phase of your hamstrings, glutes, and erector spinae group, the lower back muscles I was telling you about. Whereas the deadlift focuses on the concentric contraction, the up phase of the exercise. Now, what does this mean for you? <laughs> well, if you are using a barbell, with weight, you could and should be able to actually lift a lot more weight in your deadlift pattern because we have more power concentrically. So for building bulk, muscle and strength, a lot of lifters will be able to load up their deadlift pattern where they're going all the way down to the ground and up again, but they may need to knock down some of the weight for their RDL. Now listen, I apologize if this is way too much info. <laughs> I kind of geek out on this stuff and I never know when to shut up. So to answer your question, Mary, in a very roundabout, you know, a couple weeks later, <laughs> if it is a single leg RDL or deadlift that you're having issues with, I would recommend first that you watch the Ask PJ Anything video that I did a few weeks ago about balance training. And I'm going to add the link in the description below. And this is a great watch too for anybody who wants to focus on their balance. And then from there, sub out any single leg movements in the deadlift or RDL to a kickstand so you got your toe on the ground or elevate your back foot. This is going to help you maintain your balance while you do your lift. All right. Awesome. Okay. Marcia from Massachusetts asks, while doing the resisted dead bug, my back kept popping in different places. This happened each set. I was engaging my core, had the small of my back on the floor. Am I doing something wrong? Should I be concerned? Well, I love the resist resisted dead bug. So let's talk about this because I don't want you to stop doing them. <laughs> hey, Marcia. Now, I first want to clarify that it's your back that was popping and not your hips, like the front of the hips. If it was your hips, I did do an Ask PJ Anything on that last month, and I'll attach the link down below for you. But if it's your back that's popping and cracking when you're doing movements, you know, the exact mechanism, mechanism easy for me to say, explaining why our joints pop and crack isn't actually 100% completely understood. However, the general consensus is that the sounds result from the spine releasing gas that is built up into the joints. Now, when you move or go to a chiropractor, <laughs> your back releases this gas, which sometimes results in an audible popping or cracking sound. Now you asked, is this popping or cracking bad for you? From the info that I've gathered, it can be if it's happening all the time, especially in the lower spine area, the SI joint area. Cracking your back could potentially lead to joint instability over time if it happens frequently enough. Now, this is not talking about the natural cracking and popping you hear in your back from time to time. That isn't a huge cause for concern. And it isn't something that necessarily, you know, needs to be stopped or you need to freak out if that happens. 
I don't know about you, but I actually love it when my back cracks. <laughs> Even though I know I shouldn't do it all the time, I just love it. Anyways, this popping could also be a sign that your back muscles are tight, which means you might benefit by doing some light stretching exercises before um, your next core workout. However, if your back was popping, as you mentioned, through the entire set and through the multiple sets of the resisted dead bugs, warming up the muscles might not help you since in theory, as you go through your sets, your back should be getting warmer and more loose. But, you know, maybe give it a try and see if that helps. Um, you know, try gently loosening your joints with some really easy back stretches like knees to chest, single knee to chest, uh, cobra where on your stomach or sphinx where you're pushing yourself straight up and even bridges. Now, if this popping is only coming generally from the lower back area, it might be your SI joint, at which point you may need to strengthen what we call your posterior oblique sling. The posterior oblique sling consists of your lats, so big muscles down the side of the back, and then the opposite side glute muscle, and then they're connected by the thoracolumbar fascia. Now this sling helps to stabilize the SI joint. There's a lot of great exercises to do for this area using cable machines as well as exercise tubing. We also hit this sling in a lot of my workouts when we do, for instance, bird dog exercises for our core, one-legged movements like our deadlifts, lunges, squats, as well as single arm exercises. All right, moving on. Christina from Idaho, I've got a question regarding goblet squats. I find that holding the dumbbell vertical, up and down, is harder on my low back, so I hold it horizontal. Um, close to my chest, I find I can get deeper in the exercise. Is that a bad thing? Nope. Vertical, horizontal, as long as you're holding on to a dumbbell, Christina, I'm a happy trainer. <laughs> Hey, thank you so much for joining me. And before you leave, if you could do me and this video a favor and click the thumbs up button, I'd be really grateful. This actually does help this video. It helps it get noticed by the YouTube algorithm. So thank you. I'm waiting for you to click it. <laughs> All right. And if you have a question, the link's below down, down, the link is down below, pardon me, so you can submit yours. And lastly, if you're over 50 and not seeing results with your fitness program, I recommend you come and try us out on Over 50 Fitness. There's a link down below for a 14 day trial. I hope I can show you everything we got there on the platform. Thank you again for watching. I really appreciate you and I'm grateful for you and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye. Today we chat about, I just looked and now I forget. <laughs> Why is your back popping with certain exercises and should you be concerned? As well as, oh, it's so close. What was the other one? Let's see if I can figure it out without looking at the iPad. What was the other one? Oh, mother trucker. In addition, how to fit in strength training with a regular running program, as well as a ton of others. <laughs> in other words, I completely forget what the others were again. If your back snaps or cracks or pops while you're doing, well, we don't want it to snap, do we? <laughs> no, if your back snaps, stop. <laughs>